Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my Microsoft Cloud BDI series. Um, we've covered a lot of good ground in the last uh, few weeks. We've been looking at security, security best practices, security boundaries, defense in depth. In the last episode, we started looking at um, management of ABD and some of those differences. We're actually going to continue in that sort of vein We'll look at um, user profile management, and that's a two-parter as well. So without further ado, let's get started with this episode. So this is a Microsoft Cloud BDI series, as I mentioned. Uh, this is the first part of the uh, user profile management aspect or subtopic, let's call it. So we're going to be an intro to profile management. We'll talk about FS logics, profile containers, best practices when it comes to profile containment for ABD. Then we're going to do a demo of ABD scaling plan, which is a bit of a leftover from last episode. Um, so, a bit of an introduction to profile management. A user profile contains data elements about an individual, including configuration information like desktop settings, persistent network connections, and application settings. By default, Windows creates a local user profile that is tightly integrated with the operating system. If you configure a user profile to be remote, it provides a partition between user data and operating system. And you can change or replace the operating system without affecting the user data. Well, continuing on this sort of introduction to profile management with virtual desktop or VDI infrastructure and solutions such as AVD, the OS might be replaced for, for different reasons. And they could be due to an upgrade of the OS, a replacement of an existing session host, or if a user is assigned to a pooled host pool where they might connect to a different session host each time they sign in. Microsoft recommends using FS Logix contain profile containers with AVD to manage uh, and roam user profiles and personalization. Um, so existing and uh, legacy Microsoft solutions for user profiles came with various challenges. Anyone who's managed remote desktop services on premises, you know, Hyper-V and stuff like that, will know exactly, you know, the the old school or the old version of um, roaming profiles just to be painful. Uh, I mean, so many problems with it. Um, especially when you came, you know, with VDI environments. Now, FS Logic Profile Containers addresses many of those user profile challenges. Some of the key among them are performance, first of all. So, FS Logic Containers are high performance and can resolve performance issues that historically blocked cached exchange mode in Microsoft Outlook. Um, OneDrive, so without FS Logic Profile Containers, OneDrive isn't supported in non persistent VDI environments. And then additional folders so you can extend user profiles to include other folders as well. Um, so let's talk about some best practices for um, AVD uh, with profile management. Um, so uh, AVD uh, offers full control over size and type and the count of VMs that are being used by customers. So ensure AVD environments follow best practice. Um, the, the storage account must be in the same region as the session host VMs. Uh, if you use, you, use, you use Azure files for, for, for FS Logics, the, the file permissions should match the, the permissions, um, like sort of uh, SMB permissions. And there's a document, I'll put the link in the description for configuring SMB storage permissions for FS Logics. And Azure files has limits on the number of open handles per root, directory, directory, and file as well um, that you should use. Uh, continuing with this sort of uh, average logic's best practice, each host pool VM must be built of the same type and size VM um, that use on the same VM image. Again, this is to facilitate roaming profiles. Each host pool VM must be in the same resource group to aid management, scaling, and, and updating as well. For optimal performance, the storage solution and the FS logic profile container should be in the same data center location. And finally, the storage account containing the VM image must be in the same region and subscription where the VMs are being provisioned. Uh, so this is only part two of FS Logix. We are going to do it in the next episode as well. But for now, we're going to jump into the demo, which is about uh, AVD scaling plans. So please join me in the demo portal. Welcome back. We're in the uh, Azure portal again, and we're in Azure Virtual Desktop. We actually want to go down to scaling plans here. And this is where we can, we've got none at the moment, so let's create one. Um, I'm going to do an IMIT IMIT subscription in our AVD demo remote, remote resource group. Let's just call this um, 
call it demo hyphen AVD hyphen SP for scaling plan. Um, in my keyboard there. I'm going to go put this Australia East because that's where my, my sessions are. Let's just call it um, demo scaling plan. It's a friendly name. Give it a description if you want. Time zone, make sure it's the time zone that you're in. So obviously I'm in Sydney. Now we're going to use this for pooled host pool because it would personally normally one to one. But with pooled, you can have multiple. Um, any exclusion tags you want to put in there. So you enter a name of a tag associated with the VMs you want to exclude from the auto scaling. Let me start do the scaling method. So we've got two options here. We've got power management auto scaling or dynamic, which is in preview. So with power management auto scaling, VMs will only be turned on or off. So just available capacity. And this is the only option available if your host pools are not using sessions configuration. Or we've got dynamic auto scaling. So this is available capacity is managed by turning on and off existing machines and or creating and deleting VMs. Let's go with power management. Got a schedule, so we've got no schedule, so I want to add a schedule here. So again, I want to make sure the time zone's here. Give it a name, I'm just going to leave a default in. And then we want to repeat this on which days. Again, if you're a nine to five business, um, five days a week, you normally want to repeat this on the weekdays. Come next. So here with, uh, so repeat on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, time zone, Sydney, or UTC. So start time, so 12 hours, is what time do you want to kind of start? So this is about the start time for the scaling plan to prepare VMs for peak business hours. Normally 8 a.m., people start getting in. Load balancing, do you want breadth first or depth first? Again, um, breadth first load balancing is going to distribute new user sessions across all available session hosts, it, it, whereas depth first will load balance distribute users session hosts to an available session host. Now, if you want to save money, they normally say depth first because that basically maxes out a session host and then boots another one up. So what's the minimum percentage of hosts? So specify the maximum percentage of session host virtual machines to start for ramp up uh, PUs. For example, if minimum percentage of hosts is specified as 10% and total number of session hosts is 10, auto scale will ensure that minimum of one session host is available. So we'll leave out the default. The capacity threshold is 60%. Again, we'll just leave these defaults in, but capacity threshold is essentially, if a capacity threshold is specified at 60%, and your total hostful capacity is 100 sessions, auto scale will turn on additional session hosts once your host will exceed a load of 60 sessions. So we'll just leave that as it is. Peak hours, again, um, what are your peak hours essentially? So again, people will mostly be starting at 9 a.m. Again, leave it at depth first because that's the algorithm we want to use. And then we've got our ramp down. So 5 p.m. is probably 9 to 5, 5 p.m. Most people have gone by 6 p.m. So let's start ramping down at 6 p.m. Again, I want to use depth first, uh, load balance algorithm. So the minimum percentage of active sessions is going to be 10%. So if a minimum percentage of hosts is specified by 10%, the total number of session hosts in your host pool is 10, or still then show a minimum of one session host is available to take user connections. And then with a capacity threshold, if capacity threshold is 60%, for example, and your total host pool capacity is 100 sessions, auto scale will tell, turn on additional session hosts once your host pool exceeds a lot of 60 to 60%. So we're going to leave that at 90. We will force users to, to sign out, yes or no. Uh, delay time logging out for users to how many minutes? We'll leave it at 30, and then you can put a notification in there as well. And finally, peak off hours. So um, again, depending on some people, try, you know, some people like to work late, we'll leave it at 10 p.m. and again, use depth first and click add. So there's our schedule, host pool assignment, We'll assign to our demo ABD HP. We'll enable auto scale. Any tags review. Uh, it's just validating. Once it's validating, we can click on review and create. Oop, create. There we go. So I'll create the scaling plan. Um, and that concludes the, the demo essentially. So then you know how to do now scaling plan. It says in the next episode, we're going to be going to talk, continue talking about FS Logics. And we're going to actually look at FS Logics and how that works, creating a storage account, etc. Um, so thank you everybody for watching. Got loads of useful just, you know, links in my description to my LinkedIn, also to a link to different videos I've done around Microsoft Cloud VDI, but also a link to my membership. Got three different levels of memberships. Please have a look at them. And if you want to be part of my AVD community, my I am IT Geek community, which contains lots more AVD stuff, please become a member um, and we can start interacting more. So thank you for watching. Until next time. Goodbye.